Welcome to another NCIX PC episode of NCIX Tech Tips. This, my friends, is the IG512M, a min-max system, the concept of which being to design a system with the minimum of everything else that's needed and then maximum graphics performance, so definitely optimized for gaming. Something you might notice about the IG512M is that it uses a lot of Enermax stuff, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one is they have some cool new stuff, and number two is NCIX now carries Enermax liquid coolers, which are not made by a third party, so no Coolit or Asetek designs. So the system has their latest XT series power supply, also self-produced, as well as Enermax case fans, and all of this inside an Enermax case. So let's start with that Enermax case. This is the iVector, the same as the previous MinMax machine, and it's got a bunch of cool stuff about it, well, not least of which being the actual look of the case. Last time we saw the white one, this time we're seeing the black one, and I quite like both of them, especially with that tinted window on the left-hand side and that LED lighting inside that makes it look all like glowy and aquarium-y. Anyway, we'll start at the front of the case where there's not a whole lot. There's three five and a quarter inch bays and then mesh, mesh, and more mesh for lots of airflow. Up at the top of the case, we find two USB 3.0 ports, two USB 2.0 ports, a microphone and headphone jack, as well as power reset switches and the appropriate LEDs to go with them. And then look at that little fan controller. So it's got low, medium, and high speed settings for fan control. We've also got more ventilation holes on the top to go along with the fan that's up there. And then on the right hand side, we find not a whole lot of much of anything. It's just plain, although it does have that bulge that's very useful for cable management behind the motherboard tray. Then there's that window I talked about before. And finally, the back. So a single 120 millimeter fan, two PS2 ports, one HDMI port, one DVI port, VGA port, four USB 2.0 ports, four USB, two USB 3.0 ports, 5.1 audio, and ah, uh, yes, dual DVI, HDMI, and display port, all running off of a GTX 770 graphics card. One other little unique feature here, this isn't quite the case, but it's the power supply, but it's on the outside, is this guy right here. There's actually a retention clip on the power supply to prevent the power cord from being accidentally pulled out. So I thought that was kind of neat. So opening up the case, let's go ahead and have a look first at some of the you know, special Enermax stuff inside. So first is the Lickmax 120S, which uses their shunt channel technology design. So according to Enermax, this is the theory, the cold plate can eliminate the boundary layer to increase coolant flow, momentum, and accelerate heat transfer performance, as well as when any particular CPU core is in an overclocked or turbo boosted mode and is generating more heat or, or a hotspot than the other ones, the shunt channel technology design should create a redistribution and remix of the coolant flow among individual channels to effectively remove the, like, the heat surge on that particular part of the CPU in a timely and efficient manner. Now, from my understanding, it's more important to just have an overall efficient cold plate design or, or um, water block design in order to remove heat overall from the CPU. But hey, anything that improves that and anything that delivers better cooling for the CPU overall, I cannot be bothered by. Next up is Enermax's XT series power supply. This machine is running a gold certified 630 watt model, which features a couple of things. Number one is heat card card, heat guard, which means the fans stay spinning for 30 to 60 seconds after power down to continue to cool the components even when they're not running anymore. It's got a 140 millimeter fan with a 100,000 hour mean time between failure and it's got cord guard, which is that bracket that I showed you before. It should also be noted that this is a self-designed, self-made unit by Enermax. Not all power supply makers are actually manufacturing their own designs, but Enermax is one of the oldies, and they've been doing it for a long time. Next up, we have Enermax's TB for Depercula, I mean, uh, twister bearing Vegas case fans, which have an adjustable peak speed with a switch limiting max RPM, which is kind of cool. They also have switchable lighting modes. So there's a little, uh, there we go, little piece right there. Oh, oh, look at that, look at that, looks different. Look at that, looks different again. Oh, I can play with it. Can dance all day, can dance all day, can play with this all day. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna play with that all day. Um, <laughs> they also have detachable fan blades for easy cleaning. Let me go ahead and show you guys how this works. Oh, just pops off just like that. And other than that, well, they look, they look like really cool and not that loud.
Before we go on to the rest of the components, one quick correction. Uh, that fan controller is high, low, and off. Sorry, not high, low, and medium. Also, to do with the case, I just want to talk about what we have in terms of expansion options here. You've got either seven three and a half inch bays, or with their flexible mounting system, you can mount a bunch of SSDs to go along with your three and a half inch drives as well, up to four of those. So now moving along, we've got a 4670K processor. This is the bare minimum when it comes to unlocked Intel CPUs. So if we want to get that overclocking going on, then we're going to need one of those. We've also got an ASUS Z87K. So that's about as low end as it gets for ASUS Z87 motherboards, but we still want that unlocked uh, CPU capability. So we do have to go with a Z87 board here. We've got two by four gigs. So that's an eight gig kit of Patriot Extreme Series RAM. And of course, there it is, the crown jewel of the system, the ASUS GeForce GTX 770 DirectCU 2 factory overclocked graphics card. Not a centerpiece, but more of a just kind of accent. Uh, Bit Phoenix lighting was used for that subtle glow effect when combined with the, uh, with the, the smoked tinted glass on the side. Actually does give it a very, very pleasing look. And then for storage, it's using a Seagate 2 terabyte SSHD. The reason for that is, again, min-max. A 120 gig SSD would have cost about the same, but this hybrid setup has 16 times the capacity and uses its adaptive learning algorithms to make the most commonly launched applications launch and load way faster than any other hard drive out there anyway, so it felt like a really good compromise. There is no optical drive because it's 2014, but of course you can add one if you desire that. And it should be noted that this system has no OS by default because some customers have different preferences. Some will own their own OS already. I mean, Steam OS is available as a beta right now. So you can add the system to your card and it will reveal special pricing for the most popular OSs to choose from. So don't worry too much about that. The system also does come with some freebies because what would a value system be without freebies? Assassin's Creed 4, Batman Arkham Origins, Splinter Cell Blacklist, and Rome 2 Total War are all included for over $200 worth of AAA titles, and that's according to Steam pricing as of the time we're filming right now. As with all NCIX PCs, the machine is handmade to your spec right here in Canada. I need like a Canadian flag behind me or something. Supported by NCIX's in-house team and beats us not out of anything offered by the big box brands at the same price. And you can quote that. In fact, you can go on PC Part Picker and verify it. So for personal non-commissioned advice about the system, just in case you're not 100% sure exactly what you want, you can always get in touch via PC at NCIX.com. Thank you guys so much for checking out this systems episode of NCIX Tech Tips. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.com.